simply going to be using a mouse for this demo. Um, I'll later introduce turntables, CDs, and MIDI controllers in, in future tutorials. But just for now, I'm um, talking you through what we have here. Um, so this is all uh, the top bar, which um, shows whether there's any MIDI signal coming in, uh, whether there's an audio card connected. Um, the sort of main signal, time obviously, battery, and whether we're recording. Um, this drop down um, houses a bunch of different um, uh, screenshots, so you can change the way the screen looks by dropping down these. You can also set hotkeys to these too. Um, so I can, the way I've got it set up, I can just press a key on the keyboard and it changes the view there. Um, so with this search function is also have a hotkey set up for that, um, which just expands the tracks. Um, we've got preferences um, set up here, um, which brings up the preference window, which we can check set audio, uh, output routing, and so on. And we'll look at a little bit more in that uh, in further tutorials. Um, this is a great little feature that uh, will help you out right away. Um, it's the information button. So click hold of that, um, and whenever you hover over anything, it'll just tell you exactly what it is. So that's a real good feature to use for uh, the first few times you, you fire up Tractor. You can work, work things out pretty quickly. So moving down, um, currently set up, you've got two effects units on either side. Um, effects 1 and 2. Um, all these uh, can be controlled um, and changed by the drop down to a different effect. Different tractor versions have uh, less effects um, and uh, the pro version has more effects. Um, these, this view can be changed, so you see the FX here, there's a metronome here, so we click that, changes to metronome, that's like an internal clock or external MIDI can be received here. Um, we'll go more in depth with that another time, switch it back to FX there. And uh, same over here, there's a small tape button, which is a record setting. So you can set the record and monitor the volume um, going out there. Back to the effects. So here we have um, some controls. Mainly uh, what you'd need this for initially will be headphone, mix, and volume, and the master out here. OK, we'll go into this snap and quantize stuff a bit later on, and all of this as well. Um, so initially we have two decks A and B, as you've seen, we can go for four um, if you wanted to. Um, but talking you through this, um, if we load a track uh, into the deck, you can see a little bit more information comes in. So it loads in the details in these boxes. These can all be um, changed to display whatever you want it to display. Um, we have a sync button, which will sync the track if it's being beat gridded. Again, something else we'll talk about at another time. Um, it shows the waveform here, and what you can see in the track is uh, cue markers that have been placed. Um, if you place loops or cues in the track, it will display it here for you. So, obviously, play and cue buttons here. Um, these are basically the, the size of the loops that you set, and uh, you can set a manual loop in and out using this. This shows you whether the loop is active or not. This is the pitch control, same as on a turntable, slow and fast down here, or you can just use the buttons. As you, uh, as you can see, that sort of changes it incrementally. Um, so this is the advanced bar down here on the deck. All decks have this. You can choose whether it's on or not. And it shows uh, if you want to move a loop, you'd have it set to move here. You can, uh, move the, you can jump a beat either by the increment shown here, um, or you can move the loop as a whole, so the loop will move an entire beat, the entire loop will move one beat, either left or right, depending on which way you, uh, you want to go here on these arrows. And you can move the in and out point of the loop. So this gets much easier to control when you start moving on to MIDI um, controls, uh, instead of using the, key, the, the buttons on the mouse. So we can sh change this advanced bar to uh, Q view, um, and this basically if, uh, if you're playing the track, you can hit one of these. If it's not stored, it will drop a cue point. And you can use all the functions here to store them or delete the cue. And you can put in different types of uh, cues, so the fade in, fade out, um, and uh, a load grid, um, and the loops. You can set a loop to one of these cue points and delete them again, as I say. Um, again, something we'll go into in more detail. You can even name the loops here as well. If you double-click on there, you can change the loop. 
uh, to whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's one other option for you there. Grid, this is where you will beat grid the tracks. Um, so this is um, the setting you'll have when you want to uh, to make sure that uh, the, the beat grid is on and in time. Um, we'll head through that uh, another stage and we'll do a whole beat gridding tutorial here. Alright, so that's the overview of the decks. Um, obviously we have mixer controls here, standard to any mixer. You've got high, mid, treble, uh, sorry, high, mid and low. And uh, this can be uh, changed as well to to match certain types of mixes. So it can be four uh, band equalizer or just the three. Have a filter, um, the key, so we can change the key of the track um, and whether the effects of the units one or two are on or off. Um, gain, um, we can set, and that can be an automatically set gain as well. Um, and Q, and to send the signal to the headphones, obviously Pam. And uh, you've got a crossfader here, which is assignable um, between any of the decks that we have um, open. Okay, so um, down here we have um, the all the tracks. Um, it will look pretty empty when you uh, first start up uh, Tractor. There are a few things loaded in already that you can use to play around with. Um, but this is basically the uh, the, the tree. And uh, once you've loaded tracks into your collection, it will split them down into different uh, different categories. So you can, uh, when you have your genres filled in on uh, this level here, it will pop them in uh, categories of whatever genres you have. So you can expand this, and uh, we can just look at whatever genres and split it down. So it's a real simple way to get around your tracks. You can also use the iTunes facility. It will link to iTunes if you use iTunes to... Um, to organize your playlists, so that's a real good uh, good added bonus there too. Okay, you can also create your own playlists in here. You right click on the playlist and you just create a new playlist. Anything you drag in from your collection into that playlist isn't moved, it's just a link to it. So everything stays in the track collection. Um, you can have as many playlists, um, the track can be in multiple playlists, um, depending on what you want to, to pop in there. It will still stay in the track collection. So with the tracks as well, if we are to right click on the tracks, um, you can edit. So you can edit all of um, the information and ID3 tags within Tractor. Um, and that helps you sort whatever, however you like to sort out your tracks, you can do it within here. Okay. Um, all tracks can be ordered just by clicking the top uh, the top of these. It will put it in alphabetical order or numerical order. I usually like to use my import date as the main. It will uh, reverse it if you click it again. So uh, here we have the newest track uh, imported. All right, and then switch it again, got the oldest. You can change what's displayed in here by right clicking. So uh, this is all the, the headers that you can use um, within the tracks here and you can use those to search uh, and order them. So that is that. Um, this bar at the bottom here just shows any progress that's occurring um, if you're analyzing any tracks. Um, if that's not on you can go into the preferences um, which is in here and you can switch that on there. Okay so uh, this will show any artwork that you're that you're on as well. Um, if there is no artwork in the track, it just remains empty. Again, these can be all switched on and off. Lots of preferences to be changed. Um, these are basically quick crates that you can set. Um, you can jump to them really easily instead of having to search through the playlists. So you most often used, you can uh, throw in here and just jump to them. You can set a key uh, to jump to those as well, usually with function keys or any hotkey that you would like. Okay, so the only button I didn't cover there for you guys was this one here, which sends it to full screen mode. Um, so if you want to fill the screen up with Tractor, there's no distractions, um, you can hit that and, uh, and it will fill that for you. All right, so that is the brief overview of Tractor. Um, we're going to move into more complicated things and go into a bit more detail, um, but hopefully that just gives you an idea of how it all works. Uh, we'll see